Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Blogs Watches. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have a lot to talk about this crazy Panda Daytona situation, but there's a quick fist watch check burning a hole in my pocket. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way right now before we jump into the meat and potatoes of the Daytona. And here it is, it goes a little something like this. Guys, I'm a dog trainer. Please support me and this channel by buying a copy of my latest book, The Art of Training Your Dog. Hardcover or electronic, you can get it globally. If you're not a dog lover, buy it for someone who is and subscribe to this channel so we can do this again soon. Throw a like on this video. Now let's get along with the fist watch check. Today, guys, I am wearing a 42 millimeter chronomat from Breitling, which I have a full confession to make. My second favorite brand in the entire world. Look at that roulet bracelet. Voulez-vous rouler avec moi, zest moi? Okay, but that is not what we are here to talk about. We are here to talk about this baby right here. Now, um, f those of you who have been in the game a long time will recognize this as what is known as a Rolex coffin. I'm sure there's a reason that they call it the coffin and you can kind of get the gist of the idea here. Rolex does not ship watches to the AD from Geneva, Switzerland in those wavy green boxes that you receive them in. Rolex ships them like this, all wrapped up in um, um, styrofoam, well protected and hard plastic. So these watches aren't going anywhere. When the AD receives them, they unpack them and then they put them in the they put them in the in the box for you. In fact, they probably don't even go into the into the green leather box until they're ready to make delivery. Okay, we're going to open this up and then we're going to get jumping into the topic at hand here, which is what about this watch? Is it worth it? What's it selling for? Why is it so rare? What do I think of the owner experience so far? Okay, guys, here is the wrist shot. We're going to chit chat all about this and in a little bit. I'll take it off and dangle it in front of the camera here. But um, here's the, let me, let me tell you what we're not gonna talk about here today. What we're not gonna talk about is Paul Newman. We're not gonna talk about the history of this watch, the technical specifications. There are a hundred thousand videos have already been done on that. I wanna give you the unique Mark Goldberg take on this baby right here. Before we jump into it, I really have to speak a debt of gratitude really to James and Sons in Orland Park, Illinois. That would be Brian, John, and Jim over there at James and Sons. I was on the wait list for a matter of years to get this watch. So first off, why does it take so long? Why are there so few? Who, who even really theoretically gets on the list? This is a really tough one, but let's, let's jump into that. First off, I don't have this from James and Sons, but I can tell you from discussing this with a variety of ADs all over the world, the average AD is only gonna see a handful of these a year, and they're probably getting 50 calls a week asking for it. And some of those calls are from their best customers who are buying, guys, I don't know about you, but there are people who buy hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gold and diamond jewelry uh, a year for friends, associates, wives, you know, that kind of thing. So it's very hard to rate as one of the top clients of an AD, they really have to like you. The watch is now trading at the 40 to $45,000 range, even though its retail is about 13,500. 13, $13,500 MSRP, yet these are selling fairly commonly for right around $40,000. Which brings me to a point, I wanna toot my own horn, a little pat on the back there, Mark. At the beginning of 2021, this watch was trading at about $25,000, $28,000, and my prediction was it was gonna shoot up to 40 by the end of 2021, and so it did. Right now, in the very beginning of 2022, it's selling for anywhere between depending on the week, 38, 40, up to as much as 45. So guys, I gotta make the prediction about what's gonna happen to this uh, Panda Daytona in um, 2022, and it pains me to say this. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm not telling you this is good news, but this is what I think is gonna happen. I think that the Panda is going up to 55 to $60,000, and that the black version is going up to right around $50,000. That's what I think is gonna happen. Why the black dial version is slightly less collectible or less desired by collectors than the Panda version, I'm not 100% sure, but there it is. If you, if you know why, let's talk about that. Why they're, I think they're equally rare. Why is this one typically running about $5,000 more? So first, let's talk about the why. Well, the why is everybody wants it. So it's a bandwagon that everybody has jumped on. And unlike Submariners, which Rolex cranks out, I, we look, they do not release their sales numbers, let alone their production numbers. 
But I think it's pretty safe to say that Rolex manufactures something like 200,000 Submariners a year. And if you were to ask me my best guess, how does that correspond to the number of Panda Daytonas? It is like a tenth. So my guess is they're making like 20,000 of these. And then those got to go all over the world to several hundred distributors that they've got everywhere from China to Curacao to Omaha, Nebraska. And for a long time, it has been the IT watch. Now, as we all know from the tiny little bit of history that I will refer to with the Daytona, it was the unloved watch for a long time that nobody wanted. And then it's cachet rose, and uh, here we are now. Now, is there a harder to get steel watch than the Panda Daytona? I mean, maybe the blue Skydweller? I'm not sure, this one might be in more demand. Not, not everybody can pull off a Skydweller. That's a big chunky watch. And uh, this one fits um, a much more traditional wrist and it'll, it'll definitely, even though it's a little informal because of the white dial, it'll definitely go under a cuff. So guys who wear suits can wear this watch. So for whatever reason, demand of this particular model and especially this dial has been very tightly controlled. So supply, very low, demand, very high. What does that do to prices? <laughs> prices, out of sight. Um, Federico, made a, a, a video a couple of years ago saying damned if he would pay $18,000 for this thing when it was retailing for 12. Um, Eric made a video saying damned if he would pay $25,000 for this back when it was retailing for 12, five, 13. And I'm sure all of us would love to go back in time and be able to purchase this watch for $18,000 uh, or $25,000 because the premium now is more along the lines of $30,000 premium. So I wanna jump right to the, is it worth it? Not to me, not to me. Now, does this feel like a $13,000 watch with all the fuss and with the amazing design and, and beauty and so forth of this thing? No, I, I honestly, it was a, oh, you know what? <laughs> My bad. I've been calling it a $13,000 watch. I completely forgot that not more than two weeks ago, Rolex popped the price of this thing up by about $1,200. So I, I bought it from James and Sons at the very end of the year of 2021 in December. And then by early this month, early January, 2022, it had jumped 1200 bucks. So what does that make it now? Like $14,500. That would be the, 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 the correct MSRP as of right now. I don't really think it's a $14,500 watch, guys. I think it's more like a $20,000, $25,000 watch. And I do think, mark my words, you save this video and look at the MSRP of this watch in five years and it's gonna be minimum $20,000, minimum. Now, what's that gonna do to the aftermarket, to the gray market price? Well, I think this year alone, it's gonna hit $50,000, $55,000 easily. Um, I, I don't, I just don't think it's worth that much money when you could go get yourself a big chunk of gold. Um, like I'm going to drop a picture of my gold Samaria in right here. So that watch that you just saw, um, it's trading right now. It's the 40 millimeter version, so it's discontinued, but there's a 41 millimeter version of that watch in current production. And, um, it's trading the mine the one that I showed you is trading for 40 to forty five thousand dollars and what that means is give it another few months and this 138 grams you know of Rolex steel which has unobtainium you know Nick forged into the metal is going to be much more costly than the 211 gram big gold Submariner that I showed you and 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 that's precious metal it just doesn't make any sense. I think pretty soon you'll be able to buy a gold Daytona cheaper than you'll be able to buy a steel Daytona, at least on the Panda variety. I don't think it's smart for you to buy that watch at $50,000, $60,000. Are you safe if you buy it right now at 40? If I had a crystal ball. So no, I, I don't recommend that you go out and invest in Rolex Daytona. But if you're a gentleman of means or a woman with a lot of money um, and you want a big heavy hitter of a watch, well, you know, I, I think it pulls its weight. There are so many people who say it's definitely not worth it because you could go get 
um, a, a big royal oak from Aldi Malpighier for that money, and, and that's entirely true. But let's face it, guys, Rolex has the brand recognition, and un, among the Rolex Cognoscenti, it, it, the Panda Daytona is the literal watch to get. Why can't you get one? Because when the, when the AD sells you this watch, they are handing you a pile of free money and saying, don't spend it. And that is, a, that, that is tough for people to do. So it really comes down to a matter of, of supply, but also a matter of trust. The AD, if they sell you this watch, they don't want it going back onto the market anytime soon. And by that, I mean, they don't, wanna, they don't want that serial number to get traced back off of the resale market back to them anytime within the next few years. Because if it does, they're going to get a phone call from their Rolex rep who is not going to be happy with them. And that makes them nervous that they could potentially lose the Rolex line. So they have to be so careful who they sell this watch to that because I believe I could easily double my money. I mean, I could make a phone call and, 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 and get back all my original investment in like another $20,000. Um, and so they have to sell it to people who they know confidently aren't going to do that. And it's not that I'm made of money, it's that I value the AD relationship and I, I don't buy watches to sell them, especially not Rolex. I do buy watches hoping that they will retain their value so that if I've ever got to dump out where I wake up one day and I realize I'm retired, I got to get out of the watch game, I'm going to keep one or two of my favorite pieces, let me liquidate the collection. I want to know, okay, I probably would have made more money if I had put it in Tesla or Bitcoin, but I at least want to know I can get out my investment back, right? And you can't do that on my beautiful Breitling, <laughs> you know, this is not the kind of watch, this is the kind of watch you enjoy, but you gotta buy it right because you, you, you're never gonna get your, your investment back, okay? So I bought this used for, gosh, like 35, 40% off of its MSRP. This thing is selling for 300% of MSRP right now. That wasn't the important bit to me. All I wanted to know is if I, if I tie up thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars worth of money, you know, can I get it back if I wake up one day healed? Okay, because this is a sickness. We are not well. It is nuts to spend this much money on watches, but you know, here we are. So, um, guys, here's what I can tell you. Uh, as far as the wearing experience goes, it melts into the wrist. I, I love it and. I'll talk more about this in a future video, but I had a previous version to this with the steel bezel all the way around, and I just really hated that watch. And this one I love. It has everything to do with that ceramic bezel, which draws the eye, and so there's a definitive beginning and an end to that watch. So the, the, the aesthetics of this watch just work brilliantly. Weirdly, the, the physical dimensions of the watch haven't changed at all from the previous version that I had and it's about the same size. It's a technically it's a 40 but honestly it wears more like a 39. I like never use once in a while I unscrew the pushers and, and play with them but you know it, it's not the easiest watch to to calculate elapsed time on. Certainly a Submariner with a dive bezel is like a thousand times easier if you want to time a pizza than this thing because the subdials are inky dinky and my eyes don't work that, that well anymore. Um, but the, um, the ceramic bezel really pulls this together. So what I can tell you is if you are lucky enough to get one of these at MSRP, don't blow up your AD relationship. Keep it, okay? The, don't ever sell this thing. This is the one that you should wear in and visit the AD with because they are the one, this is the watch. They will be most nervous that you're going to sell. So they really have to have confidence in you. If you manage to find a dip in the market somewhere this year and it dips down into the mid 30s, then I think it's a pretty decent buy because I think it'll pop back up into the 40s, mid 40s by the, as we get later into the year, late 40s. Um, that's what I think is going to happen. So if you, watches are like a little bit like the stock market, you know, they go up, but then they go down. The question is, what is the overall trend? But there are steps along the way. And so if you hit a dip, with this watch. In other words, if you could find this watch at 34, 35, sometime in 2022, I think it's a good buy. Uh, but I don't think you're gonna see a price like that for very long, if at all. I don't wanna tell you how to spend your money, guys, because let me just tell you, it's a great watch. I, I really love it. I, I, I'm enjoying this watch more than I would have ever thought, but uh, it's not a $50,000 watch. And I don't think Rolex thinks so either. But tell me what you think. Are you offended by the price? Are you happy for me? Do you think I'm a jerk? Are you mad? Are you jealous? Are you, are you, are you glad for me? 
you gotta have a thick skin to be a YouTuber, guys, I could tell you what, you know. A lot of people get mad about these things. But hey, again, I didn't invent the process. I didn't invent the game. I'm just playing the game the same as you. How do you get one? Form a trusting relationship with an AV. How long is that gonna take you? It could take you a matter of years. But you know, hey, look at my gray beard. I got the time. Hopefully you do too. Fellas, thank you so much for joining me. Let's talk about this in the comments. Skullberg, peace out.